spring has definitely sprung so stick around for this uh, watercolor demonstration video and um, we've got today absolutely fantastic weather it's now up into the the double digits it's 11 degrees here um out come all the yellows isn't it you've got your daffodils you've got your forsythia and you've got all of those blossoms and blooms everywhere it's absolutely glorious so i'm really going to look forward to this one and hopefully you guys are too so quick tip on uh, paints that have been sitting around for a while these i've been sitting around for several months outdoor paint and haven't been out um, I'm just giving them a little spritz up with this uh, diffuser. You can see the light coming back into them now. So you can see behind me just how dark the soil and just, just look at the lights hitting there on the back. Look at the greens, the sun hitting, these fantastic blue skies, a few clouds in there. We're going to make use of this, guys. We're really going to make use of it. Here we go. Let's get into it. So I've got my brushes and I've got my pencil in here somewhere. My little colour charts are always quite useful. And we're just going to get stru stuck straight into this uh, painting. There's <coughs> a little insect on there. Uh, brushes today that I'm going to use, let's just pop that to one side. Uh, going to be using this mop brush. Uh, that'll be, be good. Pop that in the water. Going to be using this number 12 round brush. And actually, here's a number 6. There's another small round brush, a Skoda uh, travel brushes. I've shown these before on a number two. That will do. I've got other brushes in here, but we're not going to use those today. So I can pop them away. I'm not going to bore you with the with the, uh, the drawing, but we are going to come in about a third of the way down for our horizon line. Hopefully you can see that. So you either go in the top third or lower third. We're going lower third on this one. Also, while we're out, Remember to fill your flask. If you're out in the middle of nowhere, we're next to kind of a, quite a busy B road. Um, remember to fill up your flask with coffee, tea, or in the summer, whatever your choice of non-alcoholic beverages. Uh, mine's a coffee. So here we go with the paints. Um, we'll talk through, through colors as we go along. Uh, let's have a look at the sky. Okay, I'm gonna pop in some water to start with, just clear water. Um, just down to the horizon. And just in where we can also find a few uh, clouds coming in, bit of cloud cover. Going in here, ultramarine, straight in. Just get it in, don't mess around. Don't think too much about it. I'm looking ahead of me, looking at shapes. Beautiful uh, ultramarine. Tying passages up, shapes up. Passages are passages of paint that we're doing. Notice I'm painting on the, on the side here. But these, when we go passages of paint, what we mean is, is don't have something in isolation. We need to be joining things up as we, we go along where we can. As these clouds come down, they're getting uh, smaller. So that's something to, to bear in mind. As we're coming down, we're getting smaller clouds popping in. Don't make everything all in, one, in a line. That would be dark. Uh, and then we've got a bit there. We're going to pop in some pure sienna as well. Just to, to warm it up in the background coming down we're going to stick with just four or five colors max try and keep in the harmony of this, this painting four or five colors max that's it that's raw sienna we've got ultramarine we can make up greens from that no problem we're going to just put in a underpainting here and then wait for this all to dry and we're kind of done on st step one we're actually done retaining some of the lights in here by that we means the paper no masking fluid thing like that and we want to get this real dark soil that we're gonna we're gonna get coming in into there 
Just let that run back a bit. There we go, that's the first wash, guys, first wash. Okay, guys, so we're in the SEP2 now. We're gonna switch this round brush. Um, I'm just gonna pop in um, some background here. Some of this I know is still slightly wet, so that will be quite nice. Because it's quite misty, some of this in the background, especially in around here. Don't worry about those splashes, we'll sort those out in a minute. So, this is kind of indicating um, distant, distant trees. We'll go a bit stronger in some places. We'll just let the paint do its own thing. Holding the brush at the end of the tip to keep it loose. We're just, we're just looking at shapes, remember? We're just looking at shapes, okay? That's all we're interested in is the shapes that I see in front of me. Right, just let it do its own thing. Perhaps move it around a little bit to, to aid it. There we go. Gonna leave that quite distant in there. And I want to retain some of these, so it's just clear water now. I want to retain uh, some of these lighter patches in here this is obviously going to have to dry off a little bit i'm going to again get clear water and just get rid of these little splotches that happen there that feels nice and dry using the back of my finger not my finger here just to touch it because i know that's clean little tip there get this is dry i'm going to put that of earth and I'm, I'm gonna, gonna get it to direct across I think we're gonna need to, to look at some darks now um, we're gonna go very dark we've got some uh, burnt umber so we'll get quite neat paint there look and we're gonna go again for our ultramarine that's getting nice and dark now quite dry we'll try that i think it needs to go a little bit darker and a little bit drier in fact i know it does so we're going to pop in some more blue <clears throat> so let's have a go there we go beautiful beautiful look at that I'm going to pop in a little bit of um, neutral tint as well, just to go a little bit darker. It's very dry. We're looking for impact, guys. We're looking for impact. We're trying to encourage the eye to come here. Quite an unusual paint in this with this this dark in here but this is what we've got in front of us and this is what inspired me uh to stop as i was driving by so neutral tint ultramarine and burnt umber Got dog walkers coming by let's pop this in here about do it that's the kind of feel of it I don't want to overdo this there you go that's a that's a nice feature and of course there is also this color kicking around all over the place so we'll we'll use more water in here just to Firm this foreground up. Leaving little chinks of light through here, we can see all those. That's kind of a, there is a, 
There's a lot of flint around in this this uh, place. Around here. So we'll use up some of these here. And then I might go to the number six brush here. There is a using this these same three colours. Ultramarine, burnt umber, neutral tint. Paint's great, do the job as well. It's just a thin line here. I'll just get that in one. Gonna come in now with some raw sienna across the bank here. It's a bright line there coming in. We can just add a touch of this down here as well, just to warm this up in the foreground. Uh, there's lots of grass grassland in there as well but that's not dry yet popping scratches not many you can use those for highlights and we're getting there um, yeah I'm pretty pleased with that and when we bring the shadows in we're going to be good so that's step two just bringing in a bit more of the shapes and just firming it all up I need to wait for this to dry now before we can bring in so we've got some lost and found edges in there if you don't know what they are basically you've got sharp edges like you can see here and then the lost ones are where they sign kind of blur so you've got sharp yep the found edges and the lost edges you always need those in paintings and try and have everything kind of joining that's, that sounds a bit weird but one thing touching the other thing so step three guys we're now going to pop in some detail now with this small brush this number two a skoda and we're, go we're going with the same three colors yet again uh burnt umber ultramarine blue and this neutral tint and there we go so we're just gonna pick out some i mean there's a big stand of trees there as we saw but there are some trunks and branches coming through and that's what we're going to kind of concentrate on now. Got a few of those coming in. Not some pushing down and pulling off. Get the shape of the trees. some foliage on these as well as we said quite a few of these trees are coming out you can't paint every single branch and every single twig but that's not what this is all about it's just getting the feel of it and we're trying to create impact remember maximum impact maximum impact please that's what we're looking for maximum impact so it's the same three colors again uh, Tiny bits of water in there. Different directions, different shapes, different sizes. Right delicate now on the tips as we go up further up. And we say kind of Joining things up, so crossing over, really. You don't want anything in isolation. Bit of dry brush work there. Fine brush work here. 
joining up. Look, as you can see, I'm just lightly touching, like a feather touch. My old mentor over here in Norfolk, Jason Partner, a well-known uh, painter, used to say feather touch. That's correct. Bless him. He's been dead a while now. What an inspiration. And then there's some deep shadows coming in here. So this is... That was how I've joined up this big patch of dark fen earth to this line of trees. And the shadows are phenomenal now. You can't see them, but I can. And it's along here. Absolutely amazing. And there's a lot of... Um, like hazy mist or dust or something coming in, in here. It's inspirational. That's what I love about being outside painting. Uh, outdoors, you can't beat it. The changing light, oh, every three or four minutes is changing. I'm not gonna take it away from the painting, but I'd like to be able to show you the, the dust that's now coming in here, very hazy the light and the way it's just breaking through and we've got cloud cover coming over as well we've got some cloud shadows in which is nice just going to put a few darks in here not many don't want to overdo this uh gonna pop in the fourth hue now this cad yellow whoa that's bright let's mix up some of this because that is in there I can see it, it's in patches, it's now coming through the light. It's in there. I'll make this quite liquidy. Side of the brush again, like not looking for detail, just really looking for atmosphere. That's in there. A little bit down here in the low. Make sure we've got gaps in between. We're not just filling everything in. Just a bit of a spray in. A bit of a spritz up. Get that in there. Just that's enough. One, two. Good. That will help it diffuse and, and we'll get lost and found edges again. Um, touch more yellow. Right, there is more there is more yellow in here you can see different shades again you can hear the sort of scritchiness of the dry brush popping in here there is down in here it's a lot of yellow going on but I want to join these shapes up again as we said just add a little bit more light into the painting that's what this is doing With these colors and just joining it all up so that was our fourth hue this cad yellow so we've had cadmium yellow raw sienna uh, burnt umber ultramarine and the yeah the neutral tints are five and, and that's that's enough that's plenty yeah, there is also tiny, 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 but I can see them. I, you, you have to be careful. I'm gonna, don't know if you can see that. This brush technique. Just some tiny bits of foliage coming through now, just on the top. Yep, there we go. And then we have these lines, we're going back again to our burnt we'll mix it in with what we've already got doesn't matter it's fine we've got some warmer greens in here now see that warmer green beautiful looking carefully out over here a bit of dry brush Kind of getting close to finishing now. I'm gonna pop in some clear water just in here. I want this to bleed down. Create a bit of 
fuzziness which we've got over there. And then some of these lines again, coming in just to find some of these. Just make sure the eye is gonna go where we want it, want it to go, guys, which is over here. Yep. So these are the tracks that we can see. There's a lovely old train coming by. Well, it's not old, it's quite new. Um, we're not that far away from Ely in Cambridgeshire, so that, that's where it's got off to. Coming from London, Cambridge, London, Cambridge, Ely. And this is just joining everything up. See how we're kind of putting things together now? They dry again, same, same colour. Just a few warm notes in here. Picking up a few bits that are out there in the out there in the wilds, and then we're going to pop in those posts in a second. Got a dry, dry brush. Basically, the paint is very dry on there. Got a darker down here, and just a neutral tint into, into the same mixture. Some lost and found here, look. It's just the feel of it. It's just this fens. It's got this magnificent underpinning of um, this dark soil. Dark, dark, dark. Let's pop in the birds, shall we? You can see them in. There's been a, f a, f a few birds popping around. Uh, you might not about to see this too clearly because I'm going in now. And here either rowing or, or somebody there's a river just next to me uh, doing something there okay we don't want them all going the same direction do we no that would do it's easy to go crazy on these birds and just not know when to stop. So I think that'll be enough of those. We have one over here. He says, easy to go crazy and just carries on. Okay, that'll do. That'll be it. We've got shadows to pop in. I need to wait for this to dry. I just want to put in a little bit more dark. It's so dark over there, guys, so dark. soil here is incredibly dark. A lot of crow's nests as well. That's better. Ah, oh, look at that sun hits. Short and then that's coming forward a little bit. There we go. That will do it. And we're going to near the end. I'm getting near the end. See how quick the paint dries out here when we're out in the middle of nowhere. Um, let's have a quick look. Yep, we can see what we need to do next. Very dark. Going for that 73 colours, ultramarine, neutral tan, burnt, umber. We're going to go in with the telegraph pole, which comes all the way down to here and then it gets lost. There's another telegraph pole over here. Which 
it's lost. And then we have the wires. They're very fine. And that will do. I mean, we could pop another one in here to help this out a little bit. And probably one in here. There are a lot. It's where to know to stop. You don't want them dominating the painting. But they are part of this feature out here in the fence. And they're a nice human touch, in my opinion. Right, we're going to go for shadow colour now. We're going to clear this up. Chuck some of that in here. Why not? And they can sort of help us. And that will do its own thing. Splice it up a bit. Give that wild look. Yes. Shadow colour. I was inspired there to just go crazy. Happens sometimes. So the shadow colour that we're going to put together is going to be ultramarine. And hue number six. Bit naughty to bring this in, but we're going to. So we've got some crimson in here. Famous shadow colour, famous. Eh? Anybody who's seen my videos before knows that I'm addicted to this combination. Normally, creating a, a cooler one and a warmer one. Glorious weather. So we really need this to dry off before we bring in these shadows. So that's what we're going to wait wait for and, and uh, see. And then we'll pop okay, the shadows we've got in. Our shadow colours. And we're going to plonk in the old shadow colour. <laughs> Lots of shadows in here. You can see them in this bank. We're coming in here. Just one hit. Mix them up a bit. I'm going to say there's some trees over this side. There, there are not here, but I can see if I was over the other side, plenty of shadows coming in on this side. So this will pull the painting together. Uh, a little bit of water to get some... Lost some found edges. There we go. Not all sharp edges. Um, and the same colour. Oh, just the cloud shadow just come and hit that whole bank of trees, which is absolutely amazing. So we've got cloud shadows coming all over the shop. Right the way across. And those cloud shadows always have these kind of blurred edges on them. Absolutely fantastic. Brilliant out there. I'm not going to keep them all the same. Slightly warm up down here by adding more crimson. And then we'll go a bit cooler back here by adding some ultramarine into there, which kind of Mixes it up nicely. You see that? And we can even pop in some burnt umber as well. You see that? Just in here. Just 
just gives a little bit of variety in, in the shadows. You don't want them all the same, guys. You don't want them all the same. Beautiful out here. Hear the running water. We're done. So hopefully you enjoyed that. We're gonna do the grand reveal now of the painting uh, by taking off the tape. Probably safe to take it off, even though I know there's the shadows are not dry, but we're gonna be okay. Just hope it doesn't blow away. There we go. Take all your rubbish home and put them in the in the back of my bag to take away. I'll bring the camera around so we can actually see the finished painting. The pade. Notice how those shadows and bringing those colours in have just pulled it all together. I don't know if you kind of recognise that or realise that. It's it's a little tip, a little trick. It's just a, a Sean T. Wrightism. But I've always done it since my paintings, well, th over 35, nearly 40 years now. You'll see it in so many of my paintings, especially in the shadows where I just pull the whole thing together. Yeah. Um, anyway, thanks for that. And uh, look at that. It's kind of, it's changed a lot. Look at it, it's changed a lot. What a beautiful scene here. Beautiful. Just had a train go by. There's been on the other side of the bank there. We've had some some guys rowing on the other side. You can just get a 360 now of what it's like out here. Look at this soil. Oh my word. So excited. Anyway, hopefully uh, you're going to be excited when you get outside and do all of your painting. Just go and do it, guys. Go and do it. Whether you're young, whether you're old, it doesn't matter. I'm in my mid 60s now and I absolutely love being out here. So take care now take care enjoy your painting bye bye remember to like to subscribe and all that jazz bye